Now, next thing that we need to do is clone the code repository. I'd recommend cloning the docs repository as well, but I'm just gonna show you cloning the code repository here. So I'm actually gonna create a directory called blue pill underscore rust. And I'm gonna go into that directory and that, clear my screen here, is where I'm gonna clone this to. And then I'm gonna go into this directory and I should be able to build our Hello World program. So I guess before I even compile the program, what I'm gonna show you is I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take the programmer and I'm gonna plug it in here to um, my low speed USB port. And we can see power turned on, we've got the red light and this one has the default blinky program still on it. So the light is blinking, that's about to change. And with Cargo Flash, we can list and see what devices are found that are microcontroller devices. So I'm gonna go ahead and run cargo flash list and we can see it's got the ST link, which is that programmer, and that it's over serial, which is through the USB to serial adapter, the FTDI. And uh, on Mac, I want to also show you, if we bring up the console app, which is not a terminal, but the log console app. If I have the console already open and I've typed in ICDD, then if I unplug or replug the programmer, then I'm going to get ICDD messages. And let's see, here we are, STM32 STLink. So this is a message that also can help let us know if there's a problem where the problem potentially lies. Is it a problem with cargo not being able to see it or the Mac itself not being able to see it? There's also one other place we can check. So if we go into about this Mac and then we go under system report and we go under USB and we go under our hubs, we should be able to see the ST link there as well. So a couple of different ways that you can check to make sure that the device is recognized. All right, so I'm back looking at the readme and I'm gonna scroll down here to where we have build sample code. So I'm already in that directory and I've already got the device plugged in here. So now I'm going to run cargo flash release and I'm gonna give it the chip ID. And through the magic of video editing, we're back to building the sample code. So this time, when I run a cargo flash release from the code repository, it's going to build and flash the chip and we can tell the speed of the light has changed. So now it's uh, blinking at one hertz and after 10 blinks, it's gonna stop blinking because the example code tells it to do that. The problem with this is that we can't see what's going on. We don't know why the code is behaving the way that it is. But if we use, instead of cargo flash, cargo embed release, um, then we can watch the debug output. So let's get this guy back into the normal expected state. Well, I'll let him blink 10 times first. Ba -da -da -da. Okay. So now let's go ahead and ready this little dude for um, anyone else. I'm going to make a change to the code. I'm not gonna explain the code yet. We'll get to that later. We just wanted to get to the hello world to know that the tool chain is working and all that. And then we're gonna make a really small change here. I am just going to get rid of uh, making it stop blink. So I'm commenting out this panic 10 times is enough. And uh, I see here there is a timer. That sounds like something that'd be useful because there's not any sleep in here. There's a loop, but there's no sleep. And so, or is there? No, there's no timer dot wait. Okay, yeah. So there's a timer dot wait. So I'm looking for the timer and I'm going to adjust this to be uh, about six hertz, I think is what it was before. And then I'm going to push this code onto the device with cargo flash. And then I got to give it the chip number. This is in the embed.toml file. Let me go ahead and just show that to you real quick. 
So here we have the chip name and that is the name that I'm using for cargo flash release dash dash chip. See, it's the same thing between these two. And I'm gonna hit that and it's gonna flash. And then if we look back at our device, we've got our blinking light is blinking faster. And I actually want to bump it up a little more. Let's make it um, 10 Hertz. And then there we go. That's about what we had before we made any change. So that gets us up to the point where we can have a really productive workshop together. And if you had problems during this, that's okay. Don't expect to have everything figured out, but hopefully uh, you'll be someone that can help others with some problem that they've had. And if you're having a problem, then we can get it sorted out pretty quickly because the majority of the stuff that could be a problem, you should have already gotten past through this little tutorial section here. So thank you very much for joining us and we'll see you there.